Hey guys! Welcome to a new video. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. The welcome I got when I came to YouTube was so warm and nice. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. And thank you for leaving your feedback and like any more like requests you have for new videos. I'm definitely taking them all in account. And I really hope you enjoy this channel that I'm creating. And I want it to be very like helpful and filled with advice. So if there's anything in particular you're confused about, let me know and maybe I can make a video about it. So this video is about how I draw. So I'm gonna go through the whole process about how I get my ideas, how I find reference pictures, then my sketching, cleaning it up, and coloring. So let's get started. So the first part of coming up with a drawing is thinking of an idea. So I get asked a lot where I get my inspiration from, so I'll show you some of the ways that I get it. The first one is pretty obvious. Media and fandoms. I love drawing fan art, especially of the films and TV shows that I watch and video games that I play. Two are improvement based drawings. These drawings will be focused on my weaknesses, so let's say I want to improve drawing my hands, I would do a drawing that focuses on the hands. If I wanted to make my poses look less stiff, I would do an action pose. Three is time. Time influences the way I draw a lot. So if I have 30 minutes, to draw something, I'm going to draw something different than if I have a whole day to draw something. Four. So here I've written Pinterest, but it can be anything. It can be any website, it can be real places, real people. It's basically when you just see something and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to draw that. And I get this a lot when I'm procrastinating on Pinterest. <laughs> Five. Other people's art. So on Twitter and Instagram, I follow so many amazing artists. and. They are so talented and I want to be just like them, so a lot of the times I will see their amazing art and it will inspire me to draw something. Six is trends. So often on Instagram and Twitter, there'll be art trends going around. For example, the draw this in your style challenge or the meet the artist meme. My favourite one is the Jim Sona meme, where everyone drew themselves as Pokemon gym leaders. Seven, light bulb moments. So these are... Uh, the rare occasions where I'll just be doing something random and all of a sudden my mind will come up with an idea and I have to write it down straight away, otherwise I'm gonna forget. In this video I've chosen to draw a niche meme. I think that's what they're called. I'm not quite sure people keep saying that. Basically collages that people make that describe a character. So the one I've chosen is called Your Local Soft Girl. It's created by Gothic Mama, I'm going to credit them below. So, this girl obviously likes books and coffee and sweaters. So I'm gonna draw a girl who likes reading and probably has this, like coffee next to her or something like that. So I've um, gone ahead and looked for reference images and I wanna say there is nothing wrong with drawing from reference. Reference is helpful and it's gonna make you a better artist. Even the big artists in the past they used models to do their paintings. Like, don't be embarrassed at all. So when I look for references, I look for interesting poses that aren't stiff and that challenge me a little bit with anatomy. And I'm going to be combining different elements from all these pictures to create something new and original. I'm using my iPad Pro 9.7 on Procreate and the canvas is 2000 by 2000 at 600 dpi. The brushes that I use is called the dry ink brush and you can find it in the inking section. So when I first start drawing I will look at the main reference picture and I'm gonna draw and I'll draw over it just so I can see the main shapes and the silhouette and it will also help me a little bit with anatomy and getting the proportions right. I like doing the arms in a different color because they're separate to the silhouette and I need to make sure that the arms are clear in the silhouette. So then I start doing my drawing. I will also just put down rough shapes, trying to get proportions that I want. I don't want it to look realistic, I do want it to be cartoony. I'm going to keep adjusting angles and sizes until I'm happy with what I've got. So when I've done the super rough, I do another rough on top of it that's slightly more detailed, but only slightly. So I'll add the shoes, I'll add some clothes, I'll um, draw where the features should be, but I won't draw the features, just so I know where everything should go. And when I'm happy with that, then I do my last rough on top of that, 
where I basically draw the final character but I don't put too much effort in the lines and making everything look perfect because I'm going to do that in my clean. So now I start cleaning. When I clean, I do strong, confident lines. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't recording when I first started drawing the face, but you'll see the rest of the cleaning process. So the trick to making your line art not look super flat and weird compared to your rough is to not trace your rough. Even though you have everything there, you still have to think about the volume of the character and you have to improve on your rough. I also use different layers for different sections of the character, so I have a, I have a layer for the face, I have a layer for the hair, I have a layer for the arms, I have a layer for the legs, just so that if let's say I do a line that's too long, I can easily erase it without having to worry about accidentally erasing a different part of the drawing. So now I've finished cleaning the character and it's time to colour. So I'm just gonna flat colour everything. Uh, I made a mistake by making the lines a bit too light. So the skin colour that I want to use, um, I can't see the lines basically. So what I did just for the, just for the moment was um, lower the opacity of the skin colour layer. But I will put it back to normal later. It's just so that I can see the lines and I can colour in properly. So just like your lines, I like to put um, all the colours on different layers. So I have a skin layer, I have a hair layer, I have a trouser layer, a jumper layer, you get what I mean. So I found a really cool new way to choose colours from at Bazmas on Twitter. I'm going to put her picture on the screen and in the description. And basically what you do is you choose whatever skin colour you want, you draw it on a layer and then you make a layer on top of that and you lower the opacity of the layer a little bit. So I've put it on 91% I think. And then you choose whatever colours you want and you draw it on top of that skin colour. And this will come up with a new colour that kind of merged with the skin colour and it will make you it'll make all the colours complement each other a lot more. So for shading, I use clipping masks. If you don't know what clipping masks are, they basically let you only color in whatever is in the layer below and you can't color outside of that. So, and that's really helpful with shading. So to make a clipping mask, you create a new layer on top of whatever layer you want to shade. So and if I wanted to shade the skin, I would make a new layer on top of the skin. I would click on that layer and then select clipping mask. 
And then for shading, I pick a nice warm, I pick a nice color. I just do weird blobs all around and then I uh, blend it with the smudge tool. So now that I've finished shading everything, I'm going to change the colours of the lines to uh, merge it a bit more with the colours that I used. If I wanted to change the colours of the lines of the face, I would pick the main colour of the face, make it a bit darker, and then in my clipping mask I would draw a little line. And once that's finished, I want to uh, play around with the color balance and add some noise. So to do this, I have to export the drawing as a PNG or anything you want, but you have to export the drawing because both of those things only work on the layer that you select, so you need your whole drawing to be on one layer. So, color balance you can find in the top bar of Procreate and just as, as the title says, it changes the balance of the colors. So if you go, if you make all the shadows more blue, all the dark colors would be more a blue hue. It just makes the colors look nicer, I think. But I wouldn't go too crazy with it. And I don't have any special methods. I just uh, slide around the pegs until I'm happy with what I see. After that, I add noise. So noise is in the same top panel that the color balance is and this adds like a cool grain to your drawing and kind of makes it look like paper I think and yeah that's the whole drawing I also drew a background for this drawing but it was my first time in a really long time and I don't want to make a tutorial on something that I'm not experienced with so maybe in the future I'll make a background tutorial but like you know maybe in a few years because I'm really bad at drawing backgrounds Anyway, I really hope you like this video. I hope you've learned something and um, I hope you have a nice day. Please like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye!